Hey guys, welcome to this week's Bible study. Um, excited to be with you today and to share with you just a few things from my heart today and, and I hope that you'll enjoy our time together. I'm going to be looking at Psalms chapter 139. We're going to look at the first few verses of that chapter. Just want to remind you just how uh, valuable, how important your life is to God and just what it means to him. And I'm going to use this scripture to show you just how much God loves you and how much God is there for you, okay? So let's look at Psalm chapter 139, and I'm gonna read some scripture, then we'll pray together, and then we'll get started, all right? So let me begin reading in verse one. It says, O Lord, you have searched me and known me. You know when I sit down and when I rise up. You discern my thoughts from afar. You search out my path and my lying down and are acquainted with all my ways. Even before a word is on my tongue, behold, O Lord, you know it altogether. You hem me in behind and before, and you lay your hand upon me. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me. It's high, and I cannot attain it. Where shall I go from your spirit? Or where shall I flee from your presence? If I ascend to heaven, you are there. If I make my bed in Sheol, you are there. If I take the wings of the morning and dwell in the uttermost parts of the sea, even there your hand shall lead me and your right hand shall hold me. If I say, surely the darkness shall cover me and the light about me be night, even the darkness is not dark to you, the night is is as bright as day, for darkness is as light with you. Let's pray together. Hey God, thank you so much for this time that we can share together today. As we uh, look at your word, as we talk about uh, how much you care about us and how much you love us and, and what plans you have in place to provide for us and protect us, God, I pray that you'll encourage us today, that you'll remind us that that you are the, the creator of the universe and God, that you created us to be just like you wanted us to be. And I pray, God, that we'll be mindful of that today. I thank you in advance for the time we'll share, and I pray, God, your blessings on it, and that your word would accomplish what you want in each person's life that's watching. For we ask it in your precious son's name, amen. All right, so we started with about the first uh, 12 verses of Psalm 139. Let's go back and look at it in detail and see again, just how important we are to God. He talks about the fact in verse one that he searches us, that he knows us. When you, when you think about that, that can be good and bad. The good way is he knows everything about us, see, because he created us the way he wanted us to be. He knows our thoughts, I mean, it goes on down there just a little bit further and talks about the fact that, that he knows the words that are on my tongue even before I speak them. He knows me. He, and in spite of that, he still loves me. That's great news, you know, because if you knew all that he knows, you might not be too impressed. You know, there's a, a lot of things that get accomplished in our world, and a lot of that stuff is impressive. And we can look around and see it and, and not really understand how some people can do things. But it's because God created them to have that gift and the ability to do that. Look again right there in verse 2. It says, you know when I sit down and you know when I get up. You, you know my thoughts from where you are. You search out my path when I lay down. You're well acquainted with the way I do things. Even before I speak a word on my tongue, you, you already know it. When I think about how well God knows me, like I said, it's a little scary to think about he really knows me. He's not looking at my outward appearance and going, yeah, that's a good old boy. He knows me. He knows that I'm sinful. He knows that I have thoughts I shouldn't have. He knows that I uh, do things I shouldn't do. He knows that I say things I shouldn't say. 
stuff that some of you might not know, but he knows, and he still loves me. He still sent his son Jesus to die on the cross for me, to forgive me for my sins. He watches me. He loves me. He cares about me. Look what he says. David said, the knowledge of that is more than I can handle. He said, it's wonderful to me. It's too high. I cannot attain it. I can't grasp how much you love me. I can't comprehend it. I can look at how much I love my kids and how much they mean to me. And I guess that's the closest thing. But man, I can't comprehend a love like his. It's just more than I can attain. Then he says in verse seven, where shall I go from your spirit? You know, there are times when when I'm away from God, when I messed up and I hadn't confessed yet and, and I, I don't feel real close, sometimes I don't want to be around him because I, when you mess up and you do something wrong against somebody, you don't want to be around them because you feel guilty. And that's the way I get. But David wrote, where can I go to get away from your spirit? How can I flee from your presence? You're everywhere. There's no place I can go. He even said, if I go to heaven, you're there. If I go to Sheol, which is the place of the dead in the Old Testament referred to, to hell that way. If I go there, you're there. If, if I take the wings of the morning, you know, and just go to the uttermost parts of the sea, even there, your hand is on me. Can't get away from him. Even when we try, he's right there. That's how much he loves us. You know, I, I love my boys, every single one of them. And, but I'm not with them all the time. I, I'm not there to see when they mess up. I'm not there to see when they do something good. I, I, I can't be in every place, but there's no place that God is not already there. There's no place that our Heavenly Father or where we can go to not be in our Heavenly Father's eyes, to not be where he can see us and touch us and protect us and guide us. No place we can go. How cool is that? He's there. Well, there's a bad side of that too. Because when you go places you shouldn't go, he's there. He knows you can't hide it from him. So we ought to be careful. We ought to try to be where we're supposed to be. The last thing I want is for him to find me doing something I shouldn't do. But it happens because I make mistakes. He even went as far to say, surely the darkness shall cover me. When I get to that place mentally where I'm overwhelmed and sometimes depression or anxiety or the darkness can feel like it's covering me, even there, he's there. Listen to what he says in verse 11. If I say, surely the darkness shall cover me and the light about me be night, even the darkness is not too dark for you. The night is as bright as day, for darkness is as light with you. See, let's just say for an example, you're sitting in a room and all the lights are off there's no windows, so there's no light coming in. It is dark in that room. But what happens when I flip the switch? Does the darkness just gradually go away? Nope, just like that. The light comes into the room and the darkness is gone. That's just like God. When he's there, when he's there, the darkness can't abide with the light. The two don't mix. So when he's there, the light just overtakes the darkness and we can get through that tough time because the light's there. Now, let's look at verse 14. Good stuff right here. I want you to listen closely to what David discovers about God. It's good stuff. Listen close. He says, I praise you for I am fearfully and wonderfully made Wonderful, wonderful are your works. 
My soul knows it very well. My frame was not hidden from you. My body was not hidden from you when I was being made in secret. Intricately woven in the depths of the earth. Your eyes saw my unformed substance. In your book were written every one of them, the days that were formed for me, when as yet there was none of them. How precious to me are your thoughts, O God. How vast is the sum of them. If I could count them, they're more than the sand. I awake and I'm still with you. Did you hear that? See, we get caught up in what everybody thinks we should be, how we should look, how we should act, what we should do. And we forget that God designed us, that he put every single component, every cell, every, every part of our being, he put together. He says we are fearfully and wonderfully made. You know, there's people out there in the world that want to tell you that you're not good enough. Hogwash. That's not what the Word of God says. The Word of God says you were fearfully and wonderfully made. And then wonderful are your works. You are his work. You are his craftsmanship. You are what he created. You are wonderfully made just like you are. Wow. Wow. God designed you just like you are. You're not a mistake. You, you're not. You're just like he created you to be. And he gave every single one of us a gift, a talent, something that we can use to help somebody else. You know, the scripture says that we're all part of the body of Christ. And every one of us has a different skill set. Every one of us has a different talent and a different ability. But it takes all of us working together to make the body of God a success. We work together to spread the word of what God did for us. That's cool. You were fearfully and wonderfully made just like you are. Listen to this. He said in verse 16, your eyes saw my unformed substance. Unformed substance, just a blob. You saw that. And somehow you saw old Vinny boy in that blob of unformedness. In your book, you wrote down every one of the days that you formed for me. In other words, he planned out everything for me. That path that he made for me. It's perfect. The problem is, I don't stay on it. I get distracted by the sparkly things, and I go to that, and I get off the path that God has for me. Then I have to live my way back to that path. I have to go through the consequences for my actions. But when I get back to the path, I'm right there where he wants me to be. That's what we have to do. We have to recognize that our Lord created us just the way we are. He knew we were gonna have weaknesses. He knew we were gonna have desires that weren't right. He knew that we were gonna to wanna to do things that we wasn't supposed to do. He knew that. He gave us the choice to do them even. But he has a plan for us. And because he created us perfectly, fearfully, wonderfully designed us in our mother's wombs, to be what he created us to be. He has a way and he has a plan. Search me, oh God. Know my heart. Know my heart. Try me and know my thoughts. I see and see if there be any grievous way in me and lead me in the way of everlasting. See, David, he knows he's got issues, just like me and you know we do. But he don't want to have them. Instead of abhorring the, the things of the world, we tend to buddy up next to it. Instead of distancing ourselves from the things that hurt us the most, we tend to get in bed with it. Why do we do that? David said, God, 
Look at me. Help me get all that mess away. Make sure, search me, oh God. Know my heart. Try me and know my thoughts. David said, search me. Know my thoughts. See if there's any way or grievous way, any angry way, any bitter way in me. And then David says, but lead me. Lead me in the way of everlasting. See, we can't do it on our own. But you know what? God will do that for us. This whole chapter talks about how much he loves you, how much he designed you, how much he created you, how much he wants to protect you. Even when you are as far away as you can be, God knows where you are. Listen to verse five again. You hem me in. In other words, you pin me up. You put a fence around me, behind me, before me, and you lay your hand upon me. You protect me. That's what a parent does. And that's all God is. He's just your heavenly father. He loves you, created you. He wants you to have the best. And he wants your thoughts to recognize just how special you are to him. I hope the word encouraged you today. And I hope that uh, you'll look at this chapter again, Psalm 139, and just be reminded that God don't make no junk. <laughs> he created you. You are fearfully and wonderfully made. Everywhere you go, he goes with you. Everywhere you are, everything you think, he's right there with you. Every word you say, he already knows before you say it. He knows everything. Let that be a comfort to you today. Be joyful. Be encouraged today. Because the creator of the universe, the Lord of Lords, the King of Kings, loves you. Let's pray. Hey, God, thank you so much for today. Thank you for your word. God, thank you for the encouragement that it gives me. I also thank you, God, for the reminder that you know my thoughts even when I don't want you to. You know what I want to say even before I say it. God, help me to get that out of my life. Help me to clean my thoughts up. Help me to clean up what I say. Help me to do only say things that encourage and lift people up, not tear them down. God, forgive me for so many times when I fail to do that. So many times I can get angry and bitter at people just like everybody else. So many times I think thoughts or say things to myself, sometimes to others, that I ain't got no business saying. So forgive me, God. Cleanse me. Cleanse me. Make me what you created me to be. Help me to live that life every day. And God, I pray you be with every person watching. And God, the table recognize in the darkness, you were there. And whatever they're going through, you were there. Whatever struggle, whatever hardship, whatever tough event they're facing, you're already there. And you already have a plan. God, help us just to look for you to look for what you want. And God, when it's over, we'll give you all the praise and honor and glory because Lord, you deserve it. Thank you, God, for loving me like you described in this chapter. Thank you, God, for protecting me, for hemming me in, putting a fence around me to protect me from what the devil tries to do. God, just help me to hide behind that protection. God, I give you praise and honor today. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, guys. Well, thanks for hanging out with me today. I hope you enjoyed our time together. And until next time, bye now.